Hi, my name is Robin, and with Tableau's new release of 2020.2 comes their new data model. And today, I want to go over what it's like to use this new data model and compare it to what we used to do. Of course, there's way more behind this new data model, and the functionalities are explained very well on Tableau's website. So I'll leave a link in the description for you to look at. Let's jump right into it. So I've prepared a data set, as you can see in the screen, that contains three levels of granularity. A granular data set, where we look at a date, a product, and its sales. A very granular data set, where we've added a new level to the data. So instead of just having a product sales, we'll also specify what treatment this product was used for and split up the sales accordingly. And third, we have an example where we have the most granular type of data available. So on top of having the column treatment, we've added an additional column, which is site. So where have we sold these items? Let's start by bringing in the data into Tableau Desktop. As you can see, it brings in the tables on the left-hand side from this Excel file as we expected. And we drag in our first table, which is our granular data. We can see our date, our product, and our sales. Now, let's pick up the second data sheet, which is the very granular data. And as soon as you start dragging it in, you can see this line that starts to connect to the new table. And this will bring up the relationship that you can define between the two tables. So as you're used to, you can select date. So these are common along both of the tables. And we also know that product aligns. So we select these two. So now what we have is two relationships between these two data sets. If we click back on granular, we can see our granular data table. If you click on very granular, we just see our very granular data. So there's no join that has happened just yet. So let's do the same thing for our third and last data table, which is most granular data. We define the same relationships as dates. We add product. And last but not least, we also have treatment in both of these data sets. So now we have a third data set present as well. So let's see what it looks like when we go to our sheet. We can see our granular data table, our very granular data table, and the most granular data table. One of the things that stand out is that there's no longer a number of records, as well as the dimensions and measures are split within the table themselves. There's no more divide between the dimensions on the top and the measures on the bottom. So let's have a look like at what these new number of records, or is known as the counts, come to. We'll drag in our date onto rows. We select our month of date. We just turn it into a discrete. So we can see our month of date showing up. So let's say, let's fit our height. Firstly, we'll bring in the granular count. It comes to one. This is what we're expecting. We can see in our table that sits underneath a Tableau that our granular data source has one row of data per date. And now if we double click on the two very granular count, we can immediately see that the count goes to node two. And this is what we're expecting. So let's just format this value. So it shows just a number and all decimal places. And last, when we bring in the most granular count, it brings in four. So this is exactly intuitively what we're expecting. We expect one row of data for the granular one, two for the very granular one because it's broken down into treatment, and four because over the dates we break it down into treatment as well as into site. This sounds all very good, but what was it like when we did not have relationships? So let's name this sheet to relationship count of records. 
and we'll just go back to this data source for a reference later and we'll name it to new data model relationships. So we'll create a new sheet and in here we're going to see what it's like when we join these two tables on what we used to do before 2020.2. So we'll add a new data source. We'll select the same sheet as we had before. But this time we'll start by creating a granular. And rather than creating a relationship, we'll double click on the table so we can add joins or do unions. When we double click, we enter back into what it's used to look like. So if we now drag in the next table and we drop it, the join signal shows up. So let's set up our joins. We'll join it on date and we'll join it on product. And for the third table, we'll set up the same join. So we'll join it to the date from the very granular as well as the product. for consistency so let's select the product from table two and last but not least is the treatment now what we have here is that in a new data model of relationships you do not see a final table in this particular case we do see our final table already present and a few things that already start to show up is that we can see the duplication of jades happening and we can see our sales is starting to be duplicated of our non or the, the lowest granular, the granular table. So let's look at the number of records or the counts that we now have in this new data join. So let's rename this to joins. Let's say old data model joins. Joins count records. We'll do the same thing here. So the one thing you do note is immediately because we're using joins this time, we do get a split between dimensions and measures. So we'll bring in the date, we'll drag it onto rows, we'll change it to month and year, and to discrete value, we'll fit the height. And we'll start by bringing in the count, so the granular count. So it's decided that this is the count that we can use because that's the first table we've brought in. If we bring this in, we can immediately see that the count of granular is now four. So there's duplications happening here. So how do we bring in the counts from the other tables though? Well, we can do that the same way as we did before. We can bring in a count of let's say sales or we get a count of product or count of date. So let's stick to the count of date to make it uh, simple for us to understand. So we'll remove our count of granular, we're bringing, bringing in a count of date, and we'll add four. We'll do the same thing for the very granular one. So do a count of date. And instead of having being as a line chart, let's turn this into a table. Put our measure names in here. So if we see the count of the date, and the count of the day from the very granular one. And last, we'll also bring in the count of the third table. And we can now see that they're all four throughout, because this is the result of the join that we've done before. So let's put this side by side in the dashboard to see if we can make any more sense out of this. Count dashboard. We've got our relationship counts. We've got our joins of counts. So you can see when the relationships are defined, we maintain the granularity level in this table where we have one record, two records, or four records. Whereas if we do a join, we have got four records all the way throughout because that's the result. So in that particular case, we need to be very careful when we start bringing in sales of these different tables. All right, let's visualize the data over time. So we'll start with the relationship data. The new data model for relationships. We're bringing the dates into columns this time and we'll set it to month of date. We'll bring in our first sales, our second sales, and our third sales. 
Now let's bring in measure names onto color. This is distinguish between the data sources or the data tables that we were looking at. And let's enable the labels. And let's do line lens. You can now immediately see that because of these relationships, there's no duplication that has occurred. And we can see that in the month of January 2019, we had sales of equal amounts. It's great. Cool. So what has happened here to the data table? Highlighted in the same color as in Tableau, on the table below Tableau, we can see our granular data showing up the correct values per month of year. Likewise, for our very granular data in orange, we've got the additional treatment present here. So if we bring in treatment onto detail from our second sales, we can see the split has occurred. So 3,750 in January for the treatment of high blood pressure, and 1250 for the treatment of stare. Likewise, for our bottom sales, we can bring in treatment, giving us the same results, but we can also bring in details such as sight. So if we bring in sight alone, we can see there's a split between 1000 and 400, and that's because it knows the relationship between these two data set and it's split up accordingly. We can bring in treatment in this too to give the lowest level of granularity where we have four lines now showing. Cool, this is exciting. It sounds intuitive. But what happens if we try to build the same chart with our joined up data set? So we'll start by building up a new chart. And we'll do joins data over time go to our old data model, and we bring in date onto columns as a month of date. And we'll start by bringing in sales. Now the first thing I notice immediately is that we've got 20,000 sales showing up here, and that's not really what we're expecting. But so let's see what happens to the second sales. We'll bring it in and we see 10 grand showing up. And we'll bring in the third one, and we can see five grand showing up. So let's bring in the same measure names onto colors or we'll color them blue, orange, and red again. And we hit apply. Enabling the labels will allow us to give a little bit of more context with just lines end. So what has happened to the data? As you can see highlighted in blue, orange, and red, this is what happens when you join up data tables with different levels of granularity. Just straight out of the box, if you drag in some of sales over these three tables, you'll see the duplications that have happened. So let's bring these two together in a dashboard. We bring in a relationship over time and it joins data over time. And now we can see the clear discrepancies that we've uh, come up with. So how do we go about fixing this in the old data model? Now, there's a few ways of doing so. If we have just two tables in this particular join, sometimes you can get away with just using an average depending on what kind of detail you have in your view. So in case on a top sales where we just had a one particular month of year, we have one sales. We can turn this sum of sales into a average. But we got to be very careful when we start bringing in different types of granularity that it doesn't mess up. So usually what we do is we write fixed calculations. Let's do that for the first sales. Create a calculated field and call it sales for granular data. And what we have to do, write fixed on date as well as our product, return me the average sales. And if we replace the sum of sales with that new field, we can see 
that it shows up with the 5000 what we're expecting. What it has done is looked within the blue square of the data table in the leaf tableau. It looks at January, it looks at product, and then picks the average of that data. So we've got four times 5,000 showing up here. The average of 5,000 is 5,000. So then we can return it as a sales. So we can do the same thing for the very granular data. This time we have one extra dimension. So we got our date, our product, and our treatment. So write a fixed calculation, create a calculated field, sales for very granular data. And we'll write this fixed on date, product, treatment. And we return the average sales from very granular data. And we close off the fixed calculation. Now if you keep an eye on the data, if we now drop it onto our existing pill, we see seven and a half and two and a half, change to 3,750 and 1,250 going to the same numbers that we have in the relationship data. So let's round out this video. We'll bring together what we've made today in a dashboard. So we had our relationship data over time and our joins data over time. Our relationship data over time had a count of records as we expected. We would count at one, two, and four data points per month of date as per the granular, very granular, and most granular data source. In the joints data, however, we have to write fixed calculations to get around the fact that we now have four rows of data for each of these data tables. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe to our channel for further content on Tableau as well as Altrix. Thank you.